communities. Can you bring this home to people, say, in Milwaukee, who are 350, 400 miles away from where this mine would be? The argument that seems to have resonated there with lawmakers is that this would bring jobs to Milwaukee companies like P&H, Monarch, maybe it's somewhere down the road to Caterpillar that would bring jobs to mining equipment companies. How can you bring home the environmental impact to people living 300 miles away who never will see this, never see it with their own eyes? Well, I, yeah, my first, my first uh, response is to debate and really call the question on those, those promises of man from heaven. If that was the case, there's enough iron mining going on in Minnesota and Michigan around us right now where uh, there should be no problems with any mining equipment manufacturer. Uh, the reality is, and, and a recent uh, spokesman with Caterpillar acknowledged, that an open pit mine in the Milky Mountains is really not going to mean much of anything for this company. Uh, that was a, a recent article uh, that, I, that I read in the paper. But uh, what I would say to, to other residents is that is that essentially when, when we talk about those environmental impacts, there's a shell game that's going to occur. And the shell game is going to be essentially very simple. The mining company is saying that there will be no harm to the public and very little harm to water uh, resources in the form of surface water and groundwater. However, what comes as a shadow with the extractive industry, especially on the scale of what's proposed in the Pinocchio Mountains, is going to bring catastrophic damages to the water resources of our of our area, Ashland County, and Battle of Watershed. One of the easiest ways to, to try and bring it home to people is, is to go back to, to the notion that I, I mentioned in the testimony, I think, and that, that's that as, as human beings, everybody in this room right now and every, everybody who's listening to this is actually made up of 70%, 75% water. That's within our our physical physiology, our, our makeup as, as human beings on this earth. And, and really, um, if, we, if we factor in the, the hand of God or the Creator and a little bit of random startup as to how we got here, okay, maybe we can acknowledge that, maybe not. But the fact of the matter is, as we sit here today, we are not random water. For those of you who live your life in Madison, you're 70% 70, 70 water right now that is essentially from the Madison area and maybe even the Madison um, municipal water supply and wherever they draw that down from, whether it's the lake or a groundwater aquifer. For us up in uh, the Battle watershed, the Pinocchi Mountains are the recharge station for the groundwater aquifers underneath our, our reservation. And, uh, Taking flags on that. Another bullet. <laughs> Must be some compelling testimony there. But, but uh, for for those of us up up north, uh, this is essentially very simple. We are not comprised of brown water. We're comprised of the brown water aquifers and, and those ecosystems around us. And and when you when you think about uh, the fact that a mining company could be off the hook for groundwater contamination. It's absolutely uh, unthinkable. And uh, that's essentially permission to destroy, permission to harm. And, and uh, you know, there's, there's actually <coughs> clauses in there, the one that, that's, that, do, that detail that. Changing standards from will not harm to will not significantly harm. And I've said this before too. That our translation to that is we are going to hurt you, then we are going to debate the word significant. So, um, this is about uh, humanity. It's about how would you treat your neighbor? It's about how would you treat your brother or your sister or their children? And uh, outside of that, I don't know if there's anything I could say to any residents, you know, that, that are so far away and maybe not paying attention. But other than to try and encourage them to, to think, uh, to think at deeper levels about what's at stake.